Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about what I wish someone would have told me about fishing a spinnerbait. We are in the month of October here and it is my favorite month to fish a spinnerbait up here in the northeast. If you have any cloudy day with some wind, this bait will absolutely produce. But we're going to talk a little bit about everything you need to know about a spinnerbait today. So we're going to talk about trailer selection or trailer hooks, your color and blade selection, your rod and reel setup, when you want to use all those different combinations of baits. And ultimately, while this bait will help you catch a ton of fish throughout the fall, it is a bait that works all year round. So we're going to talk about everything you need to know with this guy today. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. So as I mentioned, the spinner bait is one of the best fall bass fishing lures ever made. And with it being fall, I figured it'd be a fitting time to talk through some of this stuff here. Um, it is also an excellent springtime bass fishing bait. It's one of my number ones that I throw all spring. But a lot of places that it doesn't get talked about is summer. I love to throw a spinnerbait in the summer. More or less, you're gonna depend on wind for that one to work. Or you can buy some really heavy ones and fish them very deep for ledge fish. I'm talking like an ounce, ounce and a half spinnerbait. It's not something we do a lot of here up in the Northeast. But if you have grass fisheries and some wind, that is something we do up here in the Northeast. And I'll go to a spinnerbait in that. My other favorite time to throw a spinnerbait, absolute, probably my top of the top over fall, is going to be the shad spawn. Around shad spawn, if you have a lake that has shad, you absolutely have to get out there early in the morning and throw a spinnerbait near any hard cover and you'll catch a ton of fish. So some of those we'll do videos on in the future, but today let's talk about the spinnerbait basics and everything you need to know here. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is trailer or trailer hook. Which one do you need to be doing on your spinnerbait? Which one is the right way? Which is the wrong way? When should you use which? The ultimate answer is there is no right or wrong way. You, whichever one you're more comfortable with, definitely go with that one. Here's my guidelines for when I'm gonna pick which one. So on here you can see I have a little swim bait trailer on this spinnerbait. Nine times out of 10, if I can get away with a trailer, I'm going to use the trailer over a trailer hook. And the reason I do that is because you have flashy blades and this body down here. This is where the hook's actually at. This is where the hook is not. What happens is this blade is so big, if you take this trailer off, there's not much there to that spinnerbait. There's just a little bit of the silicone skirt and it condenses down in the water. So the biggest target actually becomes this blade here. And what'll happen is you'll feel fish bite at your bait and it'll feel like they ate it and you'll set the hook and miss or you'll hook them under the chin. If you're ever getting that to happen, it's because they're targeting these blades here and they're biting the blade, you're setting the hook and missing or they're biting the blade and they're getting the hook under the chin. So that is why I like to use a trailer. It combats that right off the bat. So my number one trailer choice is going to be the Sixth Sense Divine swim bait. I'm either gonna go with a 3.2 or the 3.8 depending on the size of my spinner bait, length of the shank of hook, everything like that. You just kind of have to fit it up to your bait. And I'm almost always gonna go with some type of white uh, trailer. It's just gonna uh, appear bigger in the water. It's gonna make this look like the biggest meal over this and your fish are going to target here. Almost like you have a chatterbait with a trailer. They don't hit the blade of the chatterbait. Theoretically, they do because it's right on the front. But if the blade was detached from a chatterbait, they would aim for this because you always have a skirt and trailer. This gives them something to aim for and usually you will not need a trailer hook. So that's why I'm gonna go with this guy and it'll give them a target to hit. Now there's two things that I won't use a trailer hook. If I'm throwing a trailer and I'm still missing fish, or they're getting hooked and coming off immediately, or they're barely skin hooked, that's when I'm gonna to go to a trailer hook. If I'm just continually missing fish, usually I'll give it two or three times. You might miss some fish on a spinner bait, that's the way it is, it's a moving bait, they have to catch it. But if you miss two or three fish in a row, or they're coming off or something like that, you can either leave this trailer on here and throw a trailer hook over the top, as long as it doesn't interfere with the tail, or, you can take the trailer off and put a trailer hook on and then even if they're hitting the blades, you're gonna have two hooks down here and a better chance of them getting hooked even if it's underneath the chin. Um, that's gonna be my rule for that. The other thing is if I'm fishing very, very dirty water. Dirty water's okay and I'll throw, we'll talk about that in color selection here, I'll still throw the trailer and give them a target to hit. But if you're fishing in extremely chocolate milk water, very dirty water, or for some reason the water's dirty and you were catching them on a spinnerbait, water got a little bit dirtier, now all of a sudden your knot hookup ratio isn't there as much, 
I'll take the trailer off and go to a trailer hook and give myself a better chance for those fish to get the bait. They might not be able to see it well enough to actually get this target in their mouth and you be able to land the fish when they bite it. So that's gonna be the rules on trailer versus no trailer. Almost always, I'm gonna go with a trailer if I can get away with it. It's going to cause you to land more fish right off the bat. Now the next most important thing we're gonna talk about is your color selection and your blade selection. That is the next most important thing to landing the most amount of fish on a spinnerbait. It's just like choosing the right depth or color of a crankbait. It's equally as important as that. So my number one choice obviously is going to be a white. It almost works every single time. It just does the best job of imitating shad and you have two silver blades. It really just imitates a school of shad really really well now there's two other colors that I really like to throw and it depends on the water clarity the first one's going to be a chartreuse and white that's when if I have some dirtier water I'm gonna to go to this guy here and oftentimes I'll mix in a gold blade and a silver blade if I can it depends on what they come with sometimes I'll take spinner baits apart put them back together with the blade colors I want but ultimately sometimes I just fish them how they come in the package so a chartreuse and white with a gold blade in some dirtier water will help you get a couple more bites and then lastly uh, if you fish a place that has golden shiners or bluegills or stuff like that something that doesn't really have that like bright white color to it more of a natural tone I'm gonna go with like this gold colored spinnerbait here, especially in Florida or other places that have golden shiners. This is gonna be my number one pick over a shad pattern. Not a number one color for me. Usually I'm going white or white and chartreuse, but this guy will also work if you have golden shiners. And I'll almost always go with two willow leaf blades on this gold color because a golden shiner is long and narrow um, and it just does the best job of imitating them. Now when it comes to blade selection, my go-to on blade selection is going to be two willows if I can get away with it. So anytime, most of this is driven by water temperature on your blade selection, but throughout of all of fall, when they're heavily feeding on bait fish, I'm gonna go with two willows. I want the maximum amount of flash. I want those fish to be able to find it. I want them to be able to come get this thing and I want it to look like a meal and a ball of shad that they wanna go eat. Shad spawn, I will always have two willows. It looks like a school of shad, that's what I'm going for. When you have some colder water or some dirtier water, that's what I'm gonna to go to these two options here. So if you have dirty water, but it's not very cold, I'm talking above 50 degrees, I'm gonna go with this guy here, double Colorado, red kicker if you have dirty water, um, but just the double Colorado, if it's dirty water, you can do two golds, you can do a gold and a silver, it does not matter. You can see here, this is my dirty water spinnerbait for pre-spawn fishing. Oftentimes you're gonna have dirty water. I have a red kicker blade, a gold Colorado, they're both Colorados, and then I have a chartreuse and white skirt. That is my go-to for cold water, dirty water. And then if you have extremely cold water, whether it's late fall or early spring, when that water's below 50 degrees, even like 48 below, uh, I'm gonna go with just a single Colorado here, and this is almost the equivalent of a chatterbait, but it puts out some flash, and it's just a little bit different pr presentation. Um, when you reel this through the water, it's going to pull a lot. It's gonna thump a lot, you're gonna feel it in the water, those fish are gonna feel it, they're gonna be able to come get it from a long way away. Um, and this one, clear water, easily could work, even though you have the Colorado blade that thumps a lot, white color, silver Colorado blade, it still looks like bait fish, it's just for when that water is really cold, you're gonna crawl this thing on the bottom. And if you reel this any at any speed at all, faster than crawling it, it's going to come way up off the bottom. This bait has a ton of lift to it because of this Colorado blade. So that's why I fish the single Colorado. It forces me to slow down, keep it on the bottom. It doesn't take a lot to move this blade and put off that flash. Um, so that's how I'm gonna choose blade um, size or color or even shape. Um, that's the way that I really break that down. For the most part, I almost always fish a double willow. You don't need to get too complicated with it. These are more specialty spinner baits, whether you use the single Colorado or the double Colorado. Those are more colder water anytime I throw those, but anytime that water post spawn fish, once they start feeding on shad, all the way through the fall until it gets too cold again, I'll pretty much always have a double willow on at that time of year. And lastly is going to be your rod and reel selection. This is probably the least important part of spinnerbait fishing, but it does play a little bit of a role depending on what type of cover you're fishing around and stuff like that. The most important part of your rod and reel selection is actually your line. Almost always, I will go with 15 pound test straight fluorocarbon. That's like my number one way to go. 
Ultimately, it's a reaction bait. So like a crankbait where if you go heavier pound test, you get shallower diving depth. It's pretty much the same thing with a spinnerbait. If you take a half ounce spinnerbait and put it on 12 pound test and then put it on 20 pound test, it's going to go shallower. It might not be by much, but it's not gonna get as deep because the diameter of the line keeps it from getting down in the water. So I try to use 15 every time I can unless I'm fishing some heavier cover. So this is actually my heavier cover spinnerbait set up here. This is a seven foot three, heavy, medium, heavy. It's actually labeled as a heavy, but this is a pretty much a medium heavy spec rod. Um, something with a little bit of a backbone to it, still has a tip to cast, and then I can pull some fish out of cover. And that's where I'm gonna go with the 17 pound test. If I'm really bumping it into laydowns or pulling it next to cover, really burying it up into some tight stuff where I think the fish could potentially break me off if I hook them up too deep in that cover, and then I'll almost always go with a seven one to one gear ratio reel. The only time I might go slower is on like that single Colorado when I really wanna force myself to fish slow. Um, but this is the setup for me. I really like this for pulling some fish out of some heavier cover. I'll go with 17 if I want to. You can go all the way up to 20, but I try to just go 15 to 17 depending on the type of cover. My second spinnerbait setup, this is gonna be more for target casting when I'm using small spinner baits, like these guys right here, these little nickels ones, this is only a 3 8 ounce, it's a little mini spinner bait. If I'm using smaller spinner baits like that, target casting around docks, some light lay down, something that those fish really aren't gonna like whoop my butt in, in some heavier cover, I'm gonna go with this guy right here. This is a six foot nine light medium heavy. So this is a half a foot shorter than that other rod, which allows me to make those accurate casts. It has that light tip, a light backbone. You don't need to set the hook hard on these fish. They're pretty much gonna hook themselves. It has enough backbone to be able to set the hook, but make more accurate casts. And it's light in my hand, I can do it all day. And then again, I have that seven one to one gear ratio reel and 15 pound test fluorocarbon. This is a swim bait from another video, but I have fished a spinner bait on this setup right here. This is what I like to use when I'm really fishing around docks and other types of tight cover where I need to make a very accurate cast over that seven foot three. Oftentimes you're either target casting near something on the bank or you're gonna cover a large expanse of water. That will also determine what I wanna use. If I'm target casting, it's this guy. If I'm fishing big flats in open water, I'll go with that heavier rod and just really bomb that thing out there. You can get a much further cast with that rod than I could with this guy right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, breaking down everything you need to know about the spinnerbait. If you wanna see another video just like this for another one of my favorite techniques, the Carolina rig, go ahead and check this video out right here. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed today's video and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up.